My name is Valerie Pinnock. I'm with Minuteman Press, and I'm going to show you a demo of the Duplo 616. A local Minuteman Press store was kind enough to share their machine with me so that I could do this quick little tutorial. Uh, we're going to start with building templates, and then I'll go through some of the other common functions used with this machine. So for starters, we've got a ticket that we're doing here. Um, this test print was done in cut, cut and stack settings as far as the numbering goes. Um, so we were actually going to guillotine cut this, but I'd like to use it just to show you guys how to build a straight up template. So the one, the big things that we need to know here are what the paper size is. And this is a 12 by 18 sheet. What size we're cutting to, which is eight and a half by three. And then our gutters, which currently we have a eighth of an inch in between each ticket here. And the other things we're going to need to figure out are the lead trim coming from the short edge and then the side trim. And I'll show you how to get those numbers momentarily. But for starters, we'll go over to the computer and I do recommend doing these templates through the computer. It's a lot more user-friendly. Uh, the big thing, if you are using the computer, is to make sure this little button here is checked. We want to make sure that we are connected to the laptop here. And if you needed to change and hop around your templates, you can just simply click whatever template it's currently on, and it's going to show you all of the templates that you have saved. All right. So I'm purposely choosing this one to overwrite, and we're going to name it a little bit differently. So I do recommend, and I'm just hitting back to go all the way to the very beginning of this template. So I recommend naming these templates with the press sheet size, the cut size, and if it has a gutter or not. And ideally you're using the same gutter for all of your projects. Um, there is a limit as to how many characters you can do in these job names. Uh, another big thing that uh, I tend to forget is the inches to millimeters. Uh, Duplo does read millimeters by default, so make sure that you've got those inches selected if you're working in inches in the U.S. So we're just going to change the name of this piece to include the paper size, the gutter, and the cut size. Okay, And then we'll hit next to go to the next field. Okay, now it's asking for our paper size. You can do custom sizes in here, but there's gonna be a limit as to how small you can go, and the manual will include what those limitations are. You'll notice whenever I typed in 12 by 18 there, it changed it to millimeters, that's just fine. Um, I always leave registration marks disabled, it's just fine. So here we've got our width, and again, just looking at our paper, we're starting at eight and a half here. So we'll go eight and a half inches. And then our length is three. And you'll notice that it's starting to give me a little preview here. Okay, so crosswise, we're looking at one. I can't get more than two across. And then lengthwise, we have four tickets down. Okay, so here's where it's asking for the lead trim and the side trim, okay? And it does show you your limitations here um, as far as those lead trims and side trims. Uh, again, they're in millimeters, so you'll have to do that conversion. But first of all, what I need to do is figure out the measurements inside of this box that we're essentially cutting out in between these cock marks. So how I'm gonna do this is I've got my handy calculator here. So I know that we have an 18 inch sheet of paper. And I know that each one of these is three inches and each gutter inside of this piece is an eighth of an inch, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our three inches times four, so one, two, three, four, so three times four equals 12. So we'll start with that. I also have three gutters 
inside of what we are cutting and each of those are an eighth of an inch. So if we take an eighth of an inch times three, it's gonna give us 0.375. So that is the length of this box that we're essentially cutting out. So then I take the size of the sheet of the paper, which is 18 inches, and I subtract that from that box that I'm cutting out. And again, what I'm trying to do is figure out what the measurement is that we are cutting right here. Uh, and if your measuring skills are spot on and you can do this without the math, go for it. So if I take 18 minus that 5.625, or excuse me, 18 minus the 12.375, sorry about that, I end up with the 5.625. So that is this and this. So now I have to divide that by two to just figure out what one of these cuts is going to be. So if I divide that by two, 2.8125, okay? So that is our lead trim. So 2.8125, one, two, five, and it's gonna limit me as to how many digits I can put in, that's just fine. And then over here, you can see that top to bottom, we're looking pretty centered there. All right, so then we need to figure out our side trim. And we only have one going across here, so the math's gonna be super easy on this. So again, we need to figure out how much space is between these two crop marks, because we're just trying to figure out what one side is cutting off. So that's our side trim. So if we have a 12 inch sheet of paper and then we subtract eight and a half inches from that, we end up with three and a half. And again, that includes this part and also this part. So we'll have to divide that by two. So if we divide that by two, we end up with 1.75. All right, so that is our side trim. And then it's asking for gutter cuts. So we'll do 0 0.125, 0 0.125, and 0.125. All right, and as far as creasing goes, one of the good things about Duplo is it does have a little button here for the center to find that crease. We're not doing a crease in our ticket, um, and a crease is similar to a score. Uh, we don't need to fold this ticket by any means. You will notice that the score is along the short edge, so that's something to be aware of whenever you're setting up your press sheets. But I'm gonna leave this at zero because I don't need a score and we're gonna bypass that perforation currently. All right, so then we'll just hit next. You can see it did all of the nitty gritty um, math, all of the cuts that we need to do here. It broke it down into milli or, yeah, millimeters for me. Um, if you're really good at math and you wanna do this this way, go for it. Um, if your head is hurting from the math here that I've just done, then you might want to consider the 618 as a Duplo option. It has gotten very user friendly. It auto centers everything. Um, it's a really great feature. There's not as much math involved. So what I did just now is I hit download because I'm saving this to my machine and I'm going to overwrite this job. So I'll hit okay. All right. Now, as far as feeding this through, we want to be consistent with how we're putting it into the machine. So if you start and you do your test cut with the machine going one way, please do the rest of your pieces that way. Um, you've got a little knob and guide here that you can bring in and tighten so it's nice and flush. You've also got some magnetic guides 
that you can use to help keep your paper where you need it to be. All right. So on the computer, you've got this test button with the T. That's just gonna run one sheet of paper. The big green button is kind of like go. It's gonna send the entire job. And then the stacker setup is going to pause when it gets to the end and it's gonna give you the opportunity to introduce a stacker tray or some other kind of finishing um, you know, component there. So if you're using the stacker tray, that's a great option. All right. So for now, we're just gonna hit test. We'll see how this does. And again, this was a numbered job designed for cut and stack. So the numbers are not going to be in order for this job. But it was a scrap that I was able to, to borrow and not waste any paper. Right. And you can see right here, we've got some fantastic tickets. We had pre-perfed these again, so it does have the little perf line in there. And I will show you how to add that perf onto the print, okay? So just a little bit of uh, housekeeping here. Um, you do have some other settings over here. Um, if you notice that your piece is kind of destroying that last, um, that fourth print in your press sheet, uh, the auto cut may need to be turned off. Um, if you've got several up, sometimes it'll cut that very last row. Um, the double feed detection, I would keep that on all of the time. As far as the crease depth, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Um, depending on how thick your paper is, you may want to go for a larger or a deeper crease. And then the speed here, that's probably the thing I touch the most. Sometimes the heavier weight papers especially doing a lot of cuts like business cards, they tend to do a little bit better on the slow setting. So if you happen to run across a lot of jams, maybe adjust that speed setting and it could result in a better quality, um, a little bit less maintenance. Okay. Um, let's see, from the machine standpoint, So just switching to the tripod so I can uh, kind of show you guys a little bit more. Um, so your cover here does pull up. So you've got access to the slitters, the cutters, all of that fun stuff, but also the gutter deflectors. So I'll just kind of borrow you here. So you've got these gutter deflectors. If you ever get the pop-up on your computer and it's asking for you to adjust the gutter deflectors, that's all it's asking for is for those to either go in or out um, and they go in just at an angle, super easy. Okay. In addition, let's see if I can adjust this so that you can see kind of down low. So this piece here, you just apply a little bit of pressure and it'll fold right back into place. Um, as far as perfing, this lifts up. Um, I will say if you don't have uh, the elevator tray that folds up, please be careful about the elevator going up and down and maybe having a piece of furniture here. You could damage your machine if you have that. As far as the perf unit, generally it's stored on the back of the machine or front, I guess, if you're, depending on how you look at it. All right, so that'll just go down. Um, this comes off of the machine. So then we've got just a little bit that we need to do over here. Okay. So this comes off, and just screws. Please be careful not to lose this piece. Eventually. Uh, so that comes right off gonna put this in a safe place. I'm gonna sit it over here. 
and then this slides right into place. Um, you'll notice that the gears obviously go to match the gears and it just slides right in and it hooks into the two holes at the top. You'll notice it makes a loud noise and um, that means that you did it right. If you don't hear that noise, try to make some slight adjustments to get it in place properly. So that right there would be an installed perf wheel. Now, as far as the adjusting of the perf, it is a manual adjustment on the 616. And you'll notice we have this one set so that this is kind of out of the way because we're only doing one perf at the moment, but you could do two perfs and slide this over. So really all you have to do is take an Allen wrench and find um, the large screws that are in here. And then you just loosen those a bit. You'll notice that there is also a screw underneath. So you'll have to loosen that up as well in order to make these pieces mobile. Okay. Uh, one other thing to be aware of is the catch tray down here. If that gets too full, you're gonna run into jams. The machine will not run unless you either have the perfer in or this gear cover. And I'm gonna put this one right back in. This is probably the hardest part of the machine is just lining this up properly. And again, you hear that noise, you know you did it right. the rest of it I think that's about it your creasing you set in the computer system and it creases along the short edge and it perfs along the long edge just something to be aware of all right if you guys have any other questions leave me a comment I'm here for you uh, but this is the Duplo 616 thank you so much